Okay, everyone, what we have here is a 2005 Scion TC. Um, this car has approximately 180,000 miles on it, and because of that, um, it doesn't have a lot of issues, but one that is fairly common to the Toyotas in the 2AZ FE line is um, valve stem issue. And uh, the valve stem seals have a tendency, not on all cars, but on some of them, and this is being one of them, of leaking. And when they do, uh, you sometimes get smoke on startup. This one doesn't. Uh, it does have a newer catalytic converter, which is definitely going to stop that smoke from coming even when it starts. And um, basically, it is time to replace those valve stem seals. Now, before we get started with that, I want to go ahead and go through a couple things. Number one, um, symptoms and uh, causes. Uh, causes on these are usually generally heat issues, um, be that uh, mostly... I mean, honestly, it seems to be a problem with the PCB system. It's a pressurized system, and if you get that plugged up, um, that does have a tendency of building up pressures really high in this crankcase, which will push um, excessive pressures back through the valve stem seals because it's going to escape. That pressure is going to get out somewhere, and generally that's where it's going to get out. Either that or you're going to break your valve seal cover, and in that case you'll have a leak. Um, before you get started, you definitely want to clean off your engine very, very well. You don't want to get any dirt anywhere. it also give you any indication if you have leaks elsewhere before proceeding. Um, diagnosis is pretty straightforward. Um, you want to do a compression test. I prefer to do mine when the engine's hot. Um, just remember, there's a lot of videos out there. You can go on there and check them out. If you don't know how to go and do it, the gauge can be had for about $15. Um, this engine's running 180 PSI, I mean, I'm sorry, 170 PSI per cylinder uh, pretty consistently. So there's no, no issue there. Um, also, we run a vacuum test. Make sure your car obviously is idling correctly, and that would mean, i.e., you want to do a tune-up before you even get started on something like this. A tune-up will, if there is any other issues, you can work those out first. So, clean the throttle body, replace your spark plugs, make sure that your air filter has been replaced, uh, MAF sensor, which is right over here. Um, there's, you can have that cleaned out. That doesn't take very long. I mean, all this is very user-friendly. The engine was designed very well for just a, any do-it-yourself mechanic to work on it. Um, one of the you know, least difficult engines I've ever worked on. So, so you've done your compression test. You know, your compression's good. You have done your vacuum test. It's above 20, which this one is. All right, so that's pretty much given up the fact that you don't have a problem with your piston leaking through the rings. Um, but, uh, but in this case, you know, every 1,000 miles or so, I'm losing about a quart of oil. So that's not good. I mean, you're not going to want to keep putting oil, especially if you drive freeway like I do, that ends up being, you know, you know, a lot of money over a short period of time spending on putting oil into an engine. Um, I've had it to where even just like two or three days I would go through a quart of oil. So um, I'm done with that. We're going to go ahead and get this fixed and not have a problem with it anymore. Now, another way you can also test it is um, on the positive current case ventilation valve. Go ahead and hook it here. And what you can do is pressurize the system, pull your spark plugs off, obviously your coils off and the spark plugs. And what you're going to do is pressurize it using your air compressor and blow air through it. And depending on obviously what valve is open, um, just go ahead and inspect each one of them after you're done spraying air. And if you see oil or even slightly wet inside, that's a key indicator that um, you're losing oil through the current uh, case ventilation system. Because you'll, you'll spray air in there, obviously it's going to blow back through where the weakest point is. And generally that's probably going to be your valve stem seals if, that's a, if that is your issue. So anyways, I just wanted to get you guys started, give you a quick explanation of what you can do. I haven't found a lot, ton of information on the internet. It looks like a lot of people are looking, but not necessarily finding anything. Um, this engine is shared with a lot of different cars. So it is global engine is what this is, definitely. So basically, you're going to find it on the Camry, you're going to find it on the RAV4, you're going to find it on most Ion products. Um, the newer Corollas have it as well. Um, I mean, I had a 2ZZ before this, and it was a great engine. Never had oil consumption problems, but obviously I had that earlier in its life. This one I had later in its life. It was not taken care of. I did have to do a lot of work to it to get her running decently, and uh, this oil consumption problem has been from pretty much day one when I've had it. So um, generally, you're going to need the right tools. I mean, that's going to be the key to doing this, especially with the head in, as if uh, same way I'm going to do it. Um, I'm going to use the air pressure trick. You're going to pressurize the cylinder with approximately 70 to 80 PSI to keep the valves up. And uh, I don't like, obviously, you can't do the nylon um, cord trick because, I mean, 
this is a timing chain, not a timing belt. So I'm going to have to pull the cam, I'm going to have to pull the sprockets off, and I'm going to have to unhook, uh, take the cams out. So I'm not going to be able to rotate the engine um, like you would be able to with a um, engine that had a timing belt. Timing belt, you obviously you're unhooking the um, the timing belt and taking it off. So you can rotate the engine because the valves, once you take the cams out, are all closed. In this case, if I rotate it, the chain's going to want to turn. And unless I'm taking the cover off, that's going to become quite a problem. So I'm not going to do that. We're going to use the air pressure trick, which is more than suffice. I've used it several times, and I don't expect it to be an issue now. I'm also going to use a valve master on this sucker. So um, it's be my first experience with that. Um, these are these uh, valves. I know. I mean, I'm sorry, the valve springs are inset, so they're they're below where you can see them. So you're not going to use it, be able to use a spring compressor or anything like that. So. The specialty tools should make life a lot easier, but we'll find out tomorrow. It's been a late night. I uh, just want to get you guys started here, and this will be into part one. Go ahead and look at part two, and we'll get started tomorrow.